Grandma and Grandpa. Oop. <laughs> Yay! Yay. All right. Is that Tom doing a flyby? Oh, Good job, you guys. <laughs> May I ask that for the ceremony that we leave the umbrellas down? Dear friends, 
we warmly welcome each of you to this special and joyous occasion, the marriage of Lauren Kelly and Kevin Ma. We have gathered here today in the presence of God to join this man and this woman in holy marriage, which is instituted by God, regulated by his commandments, blessed by our Lord Jesus Christ, and held in honor among all people. Let us therefore remember that God has established and sanctified marriage for the welfare and happiness of the human family. For this reason, our Savior has declared that a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one. They are then commanded to demonstrate mutual esteem and love, to share each other's infirmities and weaknesses, to comfort each other in sickness, trouble, and sorrow, to provide for each other and their mutual household, and to pray for and encourage each other, and when it is God's will for the procreation of children and their nurture in the knowledge and love of the Lord. Therefore, marriage is not to be entered into lightly, but reverently, deliberately, and in accordance with the purposes for which it was instituted by God. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we humbly beseech you to be present and direct our steps on this most precious occasion. We pray that you might graciously pour out your richest blessings on this couple who stand before us and in your presence to assume the privileges and responsibilities of Christian marriage. May you guide them step by step from this day forth as they begin their journey together as husband and wife. Throughout this wedding ceremony, may the peace and grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with us. We humbly ask this in his exalted name. Amen. Christian marriage is a joyful covenant between a man and a woman in which they proclaim before God and human witnesses their commitment to live together in spiritual, physical, and material unity. In this covenant, they acknowledge that the great love that God has shown for each of them enables them to love each other. They affirm that God's gracious presence and abiding power are needed for them to keep their vows, to continue to live in love, and to be faithful servants of Christ in this world. For human commitment is fragile, and human love imperfect, yet the promise of God is eternal, and the love of God can bring our love to perfection. The scriptural basis for marriage can be found in Genesis 2:18, 22 through 24. And so the Lord God said, it is not good for the man, Adam, to be alone. I will make a helper or helpmate for him. Then the Lord God made a woman, Eve, from the rib he had taken out of the man, and he brought her to the man. And the man said, this is now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. It is the same now as it was then in the beginning. The man is incomplete following removal of his flesh. He only becomes complete again by getting his flesh back through union with the woman. But this reunification of man and woman can only be accomplished in one way, the divine institution of marriage. Please note, God did not make Eve from Adam's head to be above him, nor from his foot to be below him, but from near his heart, to be side by side with him. It is important that we also note in this passage what is called the in-law issue. God understood it and warned us about it even before it existed in the garden. I direct you to the word leave. Parents, you have to learn to let your children make their own decisions and mistakes even when you know that they are wrong. You must be willing to step back. Give them advice when it is asked for. Support them in any way that you can. Yet be prepared to stand by 
and watch them make their own mistakes, just as God does with each of us. So husband and wife must leave mom and dad and cleave to each other. What do the scriptures say to the groom and bride in terms of their marital duties and obligations? To the groom, Kevin, in Ephesians 25 through 28, it says, Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her, to make her holy, cleansing her by washing with water through the word, and thereby to present her to himself as a radiant church without stain or wrinkle or any blemish, but holy and blameless. In this same way, husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies. To the bride, Lauren, the scriptures tell us in Ephesians 5, 22 through 24, Wives, submit to your husbands as to the Lord, for the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ is the head of the church, his body. Now, as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit to their husbands in everything. A few thoughts about submission and love. The word submission, does this word seem to imply some kind of superior, inferior, master-slave relationship with a husband given justification for domination, subjugation, or even abuse of the wife? Absolutely not. The key, the answer comes from the true meaning of the other word, love. Regrettably, this word has become distorted and misrepresented in the culture of today. Turn on the te television, listen to popular music, go to the movie, or just listen to a conversation of those around you, and you will discover that the world's view of love is vastly different from that of God. There are four basic components to love as it relates to marriage from a divine and biblical perspective. Thought, respect, emotion, and sex. Thought is the root and foundation of love. It's not so much what you feel, but what you think. It's your thinking processes that must be focused on your mate and their well-being. This is obviously best accomplished by channeling your thinking relative to your mate through the wisdom of the Word, the mind of Christ, and the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Yet even the unbeliever, with his or her limited perspective, can grasp the concept of the importance of thinking about your mate. Respect. It is no more than its simple meaning. Respect your mate. If this is done, then abuse is not going to be an issue. If your thoughts are selfless, centered on God and your mate, and you respect your mate, most of the battle is won and the final two components have a tendency to easily fall into place. Emotion. This originates in the soul. But this is different from the thinking part of the mind. It functions to sustain and stimulate love. Yes, it is also the part that makes love romantic and exciting. But a warning, as great as emotions can be, they can also be very fickle and volatile. When emotions are not aligned with God's principles and the stabilizing factors of thought and respect are not present, then emotions can be turbulent, inconsistent, and sometimes disastrous. Sex. Obviously, this is the physical manifestation of love. And make no mistake about it, sex was both created and ordained by God. There is nothing wrong or shameful about sex. It is a very important aspect of love between a man and a woman. However, it should follow the other three components, not lead them, and should be confirmed, confined within the divinely ordained institution of marriage. The point I'm trying to make is there must first be mental activities, thought and respect, before the physical and emotional components can properly function within a marriage. When thought and respect go out the window, all that remains in a relationship is emotion and sex. Emotions are fickle, and sex, despite the usual common thoughts, is at best momentary. <laughs> Lastly, a brief statement about the difference between men and women relative to love. I stated before that the husband is commanded to love his wife, but she is not likewise commanded. Why? The answer is critical to understanding the relationship between man and woman, husband and wife, and the success of marriage. Because the woman was taken from the man, and because he, the man, is called to take a leadership role in their relationship in marriage, he becomes the initiator, and the woman becomes the responder. She responds to him and the response is her love. 
for the woman, this love response is first a mental response. It's a mental attitude love first and foremost. Sex and emotions are there, but they are merely a result or expression of what is already present in the mental attitude love. Love isn't something that you do. Love is something that you think. Most women know this, whereas most men do not. <laughs> Consequently, if we as men don't make the right initiation to our mates, we can't expect to get the right response from them. When these components and principles are properly understood and applied, then love becomes what the scriptures so beautifully describe in 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 7. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It is not rude. It is not self-serving. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of rights and wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always preserves. Who gives Lauren to be married to Kevin? Her mother and I. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin, do you, before God and these witnesses, take Lauren to be your lawfully wedded wife, and do you promise that from this day forward you will be her faithful husband, for better or worse, for richer or poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish till death do you part? And do. Lauren, do you, before God and these witnesses, take Kevin? to be your lawfully wedded husband? And do you promise that from this day forward, you will be his faithful wife, for better or worse, for richer or poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish, till death do you part? I do. <laughs> Lauren and Kevin would now like to exchange their vows. May I have the rings? I give this ring to you as a symbol of my heart, love, and faithfulness to you. This ring, <laughs> this ring represents a new chapter in our lives that I cannot wait to explore with you. I promise that no matter what obstacles we face, good or bad, I will remain your best friend and partner in crime. <laughs> I promise to let you have video game time as long as I get to watch my girly TV shows. I promise to be your biggest supporter and make our family's love and happiness my top priority. But most of all, and most important, I promise this from this day forward to love you for all that you are and all that you become as we grow old together. I love you. <laughs> I don't know how good I'm going to be. I promise to be your lover, companion, and best friend, your provider and protector, your comfort and compassion, your accomplice in mischief, your ally in adventure, your greatest fan and toughest foe, your sidekick in life through sorrow and success. I give you my hand and my heart as a sanctuary of warmth and solace. I pledge my love, devotion, faith, and honor as I join with life in yours. <laughs> it's the sun. Yeah. <laughs> Inasmuch as you, Lauren, and you, Kevin, have thus consented in holy matrimony and have witnessed the same work before God, your family, and friends, by virtue of the authority vested in me as a minister of the word of God and by the laws of this state, I now pronounce you husband and wife. <laughs> Therefore, what God has joined together, let no man separate. Heaven, you may kiss the bride. <laughs> Dear 
Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for Kevin and Lauren, whom you have brought together by your grace. Now give them your approval and grant them power to fulfill with love the covenant they have made here today. Guide them in the way of righteousness and peace, that they might love each other according to your will and plan. And please help each one of us as well in our homes and lives to likewise do your will. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my great joy and pleasure to present to you Mr. and Mrs. Kevin Mott. <laughs> ceremony to symbolize their unity in marriage. <laughs> Across the way to the Olive Garden for the reception of hors d'oeuvres and cocktails. You feel that? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 